Have you ever had your mind blown? If not, I think it's time I've shown you something. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it will run out of storage space for debris as it decommissions the facility. Engineers at Tokyo Electric Power Company discussed the problem with government officials on Monday. They estimate the work will produce 560,000 cubic meters of debris over the next 13 years. They plan to incinerate wood and other combustibles. They'll crush rubble with low levels of radiation and use it to pave roads within the plant compound. They estimate this will reduce the volume of debris by more than half. Workers will build more storage facilities at the plant, but the engineers say they'll need another 160,000 cubic meters of storage. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are expected to start a water management program next month. The plan aims to reduce the buildup of contaminated water at the plant. The head of a federation of, a Jap of Japanese fishermen has consented to the plan, but is demanding the government assume responsibility for possible damage to the fishing industry caused by rumors about radiation levels. That bioaccumulation in the food chain, we really need to worry about. Some people might try to dismiss this as not important because the ocean is so big, the radioactivity will dilute, but the bioaccumulation is what reverses that process, and we sit at the top of the food chain. Right. Now, I know, you know, sometime back we talked, and you were telling me about efforts with volunteer groups who are putting together monitoring stations, both for air and water, but also uh, looking for things like cesium in, in the fish. Uh, yeah. What's the status of that? Well, the uh, Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network is one of the, the great um, coalitions happening in North America, and they're really uh, urging the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to take this issue seriously, to put official federal monitoring at a much higher alert level on the food that's you know coming from the ocean, that's even being imported from Japan, because our regulations are much weaker than Japan's. Japan allows for 100, 100 pectorals per kilogram of radioactive cesium in food. Beyond that, it's considered unfit for human consumption. Incredibly, in the U.S., the standard is 1,200 becquerels per kilogram. So we Whoa. need to be importing Japanese contaminated food into the United States. Whoa. And is, is this uh, Japanese contaminated food that is too radioactive for Japan, so they're exporting it? You're talking about seafood? Uh, all, all food, um, even crops that are being grown, not just in Fukushima Prefecture, but in adjacent prefectures. So, is that rice? Yes, you name it. I mean, I've uh, checked the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, website from time to time to see the list grow of the various foods that are being contaminated in Japan and at, at certain different levels. Now, this is, this is what could be and what the levels are. What is actually being measured? You have, you know, like, uh, you know, hey, this group of, of 15 people in Portland, Oregon just discovered, you know, at this restaurant, you know, salmon that kicks a Geiger counter at this point. Is there anything like that? I think it's still in the initial stages to try to set up those kind of systems. I mean, it's even been forced on the people of Japan to do their own food analysis because their government, which is in bed with the nuclear industry, isn't doing anywhere near an adequate job. So. Officials from the government and plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company have already won the consent of fishery cooperatives in the region. Plant workers will pump water out of the ground before it seeps into reactor buildings and gets contaminated with radioactive substances. They'll then discharge the water into the ocean. Hiroshi Kishi, chairman of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations, handed a written list of demands to industry minister Toshimitsu Motegi. The federation is calling on the government to have a third party monitor the groundwater plan as well as the government's countermeasures against radiation rumors. Motegi said he'll do his best to meet the federation's demands because he understands that the fishermen have made a difficult decision in accepting the plan. The cultural cooperative has held a pre-opening party for its restaurant in Beverly Hills. The cooperative is aiming to boost exports of Japanese agricultural products through directly operated franchises. About 200 chefs and journalists were invited to the event.
they tasted grilled beef from Miyazaki Prefecture and Koshikari rice in the form of sushi and other dishes. We want to develop overseas markets for Japanese food by providing opportunities for foreign customers to learn about the taste of high quality Japanese products. The cooperative already has a restaurant in Hong Kong. It plans to open eight more in the coming year in Europe and Southeast Asia. An elementary school has reopened near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The government lifted its evacuation order after the area was decontaminated. Students were relocated to a temporary campus about 20 kilometers away after the 2011 nuclear accident. Teachers at Furumichi Elementary School in northeastern Japan are now welcoming new students. About 60 classmates, parents, and local residents took part in the ceremony. Let's start new school life together at this Fulumichi Elementary School. I'm worried about radiation levels. but I'm happy to attend an entrance ceremony at a school in a place where I grew up. And as a parent, I'm thrilled to see happy looks on children's faces. Officials say enrollment has dropped by one-third. Some move to other schools near where they now live. Sixty percent of students will spend about an hour traveling to school by bus as their families continue to live outside the Miyakoji district. From Iran and six world powers believe they may be closing in on a deal on the Iranian nuclear program. They're hoping to make enough progress this week to start drafting an agreement. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif says the delegates will finish their discussions this week in Vienna. They're trying to reach a comprehensive deal by July 20th. A senior U.S. official said they would likely complete their talks by the deadline, but they've still got some issues to resolve. The Iranians say the major powers must respect what they call their right to enrich uranium for peaceful purposes. But such activity can have both civilian and military uses. The negotiators will also discuss a heavy water reactor under construction in the western city of Iraq. The negotiators from the major powers fear the reactor could be used to extract weapons-grade plutonium. A fisherman in Japan is rallying opposition to what he sees as a threat to humankind. He was exposed to radiation in March 1954 when the U.S. tested a nuclear bomb in the Marshall Islands. Now he spends his time campaigning to get rid of those weapons. NHK World's Yusuke Ota has his story. 
Matashichi Oishi has first-hand experience of nuclear fallout. Two days after the nuclear explosion, my skin started to swell up where the coral dust had landed. It turned into blisters. They were radiation burns. Oishi still gives talks about what happened to him. As time passes, he is worried that people will forget the nuclear tests. The bomb was the largest ever tested by the U.S. The plume spread for hundreds of miles, engulfing the crew of the number no. 5 Hukuryuma fishing boat. Oishi and his colleagues were covered with radioactive dust from the atoll. He developed liver cancer and other major health problems. He has tumors in his lungs and takes 20 different drugs every day. Oishi often thinks of the locals who were also affected by the blast. It's essential that I go back to the islands. I want to know more about how the people there are doing. Oishi timed his visit to the Marshall Islands, so he would arrive on March 1st, the anniversary of the nuclear test. It's been 10 years since his last visit. Four years ago, the U.S. government said it was safe for evacuees to return to islands that had been contaminated. But many still fear radioactivity. A lot of islanders suffer health problems related to exposure to radioactive fallout. I'm on thyroid medication. A Japanese doctor checked 30 people. They found 11 had thyroid gland disorders. These are thought to be directly related to the nuclear tests. Nerji Joseph is from Rongrap Atoll. Just like Oishi, she was exposed to the radioactive dust. Forced to leave her home in 1954, she has been living in the capital, Majuro. I'm happy to meet someone who has had experiences very similar to mine. People like me and Mr. Oishi have to continue telling the world about what we have gone through. Oishi also took with him photos of Hiroshima after the atomic bomb, as well as Marshall Islanders with radiation burns. He told the children nuclear weapons must be abolished. We want to study art and make sure we clear all these problems and bring, bring the peace and love of all mankind. I'm happy that they listened so attentively. I think it's my duty to keep telling my story as long as I am alive. Oishi's experience near Bikini Atoll has resulted in a lifelong mission. Wherever he goes, he calls for an end to nuclear weapons. Yusuke Oto, NHK World, Major. Congratulations, you have completed this video with flying colors. Please await your certificate and complimentary fruit basket in the mail before proceeding any further.